Hey everyone, uh, I realise it's been quite a long time since I've uploaded any tutorials or music or actually anything to this channel. Um, certainly been a long time since I've streamed and that is something that I do want to get back into. Dan, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. Um, but it's been a busy few months and I've also been learning Logic Pro 11 uh, since moving back over to Mac OS. Now, if you watched any of my stuff previously, you'll know that I've worked in Reason exclusively for probably the last sort of six, seven, eight years. And I tried going back to Cubase, which is where I started in the 90s, kind of showing my age, tried out Live, tried FL Studio, did not like that at all. Um, and Logic Pro is really sort of ticking most of the boxes that I have. But one of the things that I always missed whenever I tried to move away from Reason was the automation system. Now, if you've watched any of my streams before or any of my videos, you'll probably have seen me bang on about Reason's automation and why I think it's so good. Um, and to kind of summarize that, um, in most other doors, if you automate 10 parameters, you then have to draw in 10 return points to get those parameters back to where they were before you automated. Now in Reason, it's a completely different story. If I create automation lanes for cutoff and for this reverb dry wet mix, I can draw in any shapes that I like. And then the boundary where the clip ends is where the automation is going to return to its original value. So to show you that in action, we're going to do a filter sweep and then a reverb dry wet blend. So you can see in that way, it would be really, really quick and easy to automate a whole bunch of parameters and not have to worry about resetting them afterwards. Now, when I started using Logic and I found that I really enjoyed so many things about it, and then I came to the automation, I was like, damn, it does the same thing here as well. Turns out it doesn't. So what can be a little bit confusing about Logic, certainly has been to me as I've been kind of finding my way around it, is that there's actually two different um, settings dialogues. There's your global um, program settings, which you can access by pressing Option and X. And then there's project settings, which you access with Option and P. And I find that a little bit weird because there are some options in here that I think should be global uh, program parameters. For instance, MIDI note chase has to be enabled per project. So what I've actually done is turned on all the things that I want in the project settings and then saved that as a default uh, template. But in this general tab here, there's an option right down the bottom that I completely missed uh, for the first sort of few weeks that I was using Logic. And it says, use preset parameter value for regions without region automation if no track automation is present which sounds exactly like how Reason works, and it turns out it is. So I've got a little um, arpeggio going here, the same as we had in Reason, and I've automated the filter up, and then the dry balance and the wet balance of Chromaverb uh, to kind of simulate that same reverb swelling effect. Now, another really cool thing about this is that unlike in Reason, uh, where when you've made an automation lane for something, it can no longer be adjusted by hand. Uh, it's kind of locked in its static place. Um, you can change these to whatever you want at any time and have that be the new kind of return or default setting. So this might seem like quite a small, inconsequential thing. Uh, personally, when I found out about it, which was today, hence doing the video, um, it got me really excited because, you know, that was one of the main things that I was like, I love working in, in Logic, but I really miss uh, Reason's automation system. And this is probably the closest that I've actually seen in any door to how Reason does this. As far as I'm aware, Cubase doesn't have this function. Um, the only thing that you can't do on this is have automation clips that are independent from the note clips. So to kind of show you that in context, again, uh, you'll see that in Reason, these automation clips kind of exist as their own things and they can be moved about freely, whereas in Logic, they're bound to the note clip. So that is still one thing where I feel that Reason has the edge there with regards to automation. And there might be instances where I you know, want to do sound design in Reason uh, as opposed to Logic and then bounce it out, bring it into my projects. Um, now, sometimes having your automation living kind of within the bounds of these MIDI regions uh, doesn't necessarily work out. So say for instance, I wanted to do that reverb dry to wet and then back down effect uh, on this long sustained note. So imagine this is like a texture uh, or a long evolving pad or something. Um, and I wanted to do that effect in the middle here. I could go to my marquee selection tool, click and drag, click once, and then it's gonna say split, which means that whatever evolution is happening in the sound at this point 
it's going to stop and restart when I get to the clip uh, where the automation is. So another way to do that would instead be uh, to highlight the clip. We'll go to automation again and region. I'm going to open up the plugin and we'll go to the dry wet mix for the reverb. I'm going to click once to create my base value. I'll click again to set where I want the effect to start. And then I'll click up to draw a ramp and then we'll draw in another point down here. Now, this is something that I encountered while I was trying to figure out how to do this. When I move these two points closer together, it's either going to try and create this downward slope or it's going to overwrite the top of the ramp altogether, which is really, really annoying. And I was kind of trying out like maybe you have to get in closer uh, and then you can kind of make these nearer together, but it's still not like a sharp drop. Um, it's not at all obvious, but if you click and hold, hold option and then move it towards the other point, you're going to get that uh, instant return back down to zero. It's going to create this additional point. I don't know why, but you can just double click to remove that. And so now within this kind of single long sustained note, uh, we have the same effect as before. An alternative to manually creating the start, maximum and return values uh, is that you can also use the marquee tool. So I have that bound to my uh, command tool. And while I'm in the automation lane, I'm going to hold command, click and drag where I want the automation to happen. And then I can click once and it's going to make my points for me, giving me the base value. And then I can do my automation in this space in between and it's going to return to the value there. You can also, once you've created that, you can just kind of click and drag on the line and you can get these nice kind of sharp uh, adjustments as well. So yeah, just a quick and hopefully helpful tutorial video for anyone that's just kind of finding their way around logic as I am. As I say, I've only been working in it for the last sort of two or three months or so, um, but I'm getting some really, really good work done in it, especially for my, uh, my day job, which is working at a production music library. Everything that I'm writing for them now is being done in logic. So uh, as I continue to find out little things like this, I'm just going to upload them on here, kind of share my thoughts on them. Um, and if there's anything that anyone would like to know how to do, if I don't know how to do it, I'll try and find out. So yeah, cheers for checking this video out. I'm going to end the video by just giving a little sneak peek into some of the things that I've been doing for work uh, within Logic. So enjoy the tunes.